How long did you give yourself after that championship to, to kind of just bask in it for a little while before you went right back to the computer and right back to your staff and said, let's get going? We allowed the players to celebrate, but as a front office staff, we got to work right away because we didn't stop playing until November 2nd. And so we, had, we knew we had a lot of work to do to get this team uh, put together for this year. So quite frankly, uh, we had negative days off, uh, but that's okay because there'll be plenty of time down the road to reflect on what happened and enjoy it. When, when you, uh, the, the impact in Houston, obviously, now that's not something you could forecast, right. obviously, uh, uh, the idea of what, what Harvey did and, and, and the, the, uh, the heart of a community being shattered as it was and then being rebuilt. Yeah. Um, when that happened, and I know you've spoken to this before, but the idea of, of it took on a different complexity this season than it did, than it did before. When you're trying to win a championship, yeah. now you're healing at yeah. the same time. Was that a Talk about that, yeah. just the idea of how that evolved. As this I think it affected all of us because everybody on the team and the organization knew people that were affected, dramatically affected by Harvey. Homes lost, had to, it became homeless, etc. Um, and the devastation was, you could see it all over, everywhere. It was, you couldn't escape it. And to be able to give people a little bit of a distraction, uh, an opportunity to think about what might happen, some hope. Uh, one of the most iconic photos I saw was a family in their gutted house trying to rebuild with an old TV celebrating the last out of the World Series. To me, that reflects the Houston spirit that we were trying to at least create an environment so that could happen. And yeah, I will say that both Jim Crane and myself stretched a little harder to get Justin Verlander on that trade deadline, that right. second trade deadline, because we knew how important uh, making a, a, a single like that would be to our fans and to our community. And it ended up being one of the more important things we did all year. It's interesting, Brian McCann was talking uh, in the locker room about that, that he's been in a lot of locker rooms and, and the dynamic of a locker room, and going back to that for a moment, of, of, of guys who have the, the heart and spirit mm -hmm. and the accountability and, and keeping an eye on each other and also liking each other. Right. He says Som sometimes you just luck out right. by getting those kind of guys together. Sometimes you bring them in and, right. and you hope that the pieces fit so round, round and round holes and square and square holes. Uh, is, is, as you objectively mm -hmm. stand back as general manager and just sit back, mm -hmm. is this, was it, did you luck out a little bit on some mm -hmm. of these guys or was, was this tactic? Well, it's, it's both. We did have a lot of good fortune last year, good fortune in, in things that went our way as we were playing the season, health, et cetera. But we also had good fortune in how all the players supported and challenged each other and, and how the front office supported the players, the players supported the coaching staff and all of that. And, you know, will it, will it happen again this year? We have a new collection of players down there this year. So it's going to happen in a different way. Each year leaves its own fingerprint, if you will. Um, and Winning helps, but uh, you have to have good character to, to win in any sport these days. And I think we do have the fundamentals that could help us do it again. Okay, bullseye's on your back now. Sure. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't out there. Uh, now, now everyone's chasing you. Uh, the way you're treated by the rest of the baseball world, the way the players are treated now and everything, have you noticed, did it shift uh, now, the way the Houston Astros are perceived out there in the, the great landscape of things? Well, no question. First of all, there's so many more fans that have appeared all around the country and all around the world. And it's great to see uh, a lot of people here in spring training that didn't used to come. Um, it's great everywhere we go on the road. We now see pockets of Astros fans and hats and everything. Um, you know, we decided as an organization we're going to embrace the fact that we have a target on our back. We know that people are going to be gunning for us. That's the, uh, the honor of being a world champion. Um, and rather than running for it, we're going to embrace it straight on. And, and, you know, guys are wearing back to back shirts out there. Uh, we know that uh, we have the talent to win again, and we know there's going to be a lot of teams gunning for us, so we're ready for it. Dallas doesn't seem to have any problem with it. No, he that's doesn't. Sure. He doesn't. Sure. Does that, does that, uh, is that good? Yeah, it's, I think it sets the tone. Uh, rather than um, you know, avoid the conversation or let it sneak up on you, we know teams are going to gear up. They're going to put their best lineups out there. We're already seeing it in spring training. Teams are coming with their best lineups to face us just so they can say we beat the world champions. And so we have our work cut out for us, but we certainly have the talent to be able to, to win the division again and hopefully go deep in the playoffs. Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're watching Sports Tonight, San Antonio's only nightly 30-minute sportscast with exclusive sports coverage you won't find anywhere else.